Hello everybody and welcome to another video with Print Design Academy here where we are teaching designers to be experts in print design. My name is Dave and today we're going to talk about the top six things, six things that you should know before you start entering into that print design arena. And they're easy, I promise. I made them easy. You'll get it. It's, it'll be good. It'll, it'll be good. So let's get into it. Let's start with the first one here, bleed and trim. Now I'm gonna start with trim because it's easier to explain bleed when I tell you what trim is. Trim is the cut of the end of your print piece. So if it's a business card, just a standard business card, two by three and a half is your trim, shown here. Trim is identified by the crop marks in your file. So if you've ever seen like the little marks, the two lines and the corners of your file, that's indicating the trim area of that particular file. So your printer is going to use that to identify, you know, they're printing on a big sheet. They're gonna use those crop marks to identify where they are going to cut each of those individual cards or booklets or whatever it is that you're producing with those crop marks. Now, bleed is the ink that carries beyond the trim line. So showing here, because any ink that you're running up to the edge of that trim line, you need to extend past that trim line by an eighth of an inch. Now your printer uses bleed to make any sort of slight adjustments in the finishing or the bindery of that particular print piece that they might need to make, but also understand that manufa it's manufacturing. Printing is manufacturing. And with any manufacturing, there are tolerances. And when it comes to print manufacturing, that bleed, extending that image across that trim line into the bleed area, that is needed to be done. Otherwise, when you trim it and you didn't have bleed, you could end up with a little bit of movement in that ink showing white on the surface of some of your print stuff. So that is trim and bleed. Second is process in CMYK. Now I'm sure you've heard the term CMYK before, but let's just like, it's okay, let's just talk about it again. CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, or key is how they got the K, you know what I'm saying? Um, now that is the majority of print that you see was produced CMYK. It's the most common inks that are used to produce print. Now they're sometimes also called process. Those are the process inks. Also sometimes called full color inks. You want full color print? That means CMYK, the most common type. With those four colors, you can create a wide gamut. You can produce photos. You can create um, really nice uh, colors. You can do really nice solid colors, certain solid colors. We'll get into that in another video, but CMYK is the, the, the standard. So a lot of stuff is produced with just CMYK full color. Now, when you're thinking beyond what CMYK can do and trying to create something a little special, maybe a little fluorescent, maybe a little metallic, that takes us to number three, Pantone. Pantone is the worldwide color standards. If you wanna print Pantone 200 in Europe, it's the same as Pantone 200 in Canada. It's just the standards developed. Now, as a designer, you've probably seen the Pantone guides. They're really nice, they're really sought after, they're really expensive, and they're extremely important tools in your print design career. So if you're getting into print design, get a set of Pantone books, super important. They will help you significantly in creating brands, creating designs um, for print. So get a Pantone book and understand what they are. Now, the difference between CMYK and Process and Pantones is I like to take this to like the paint analogy. Whereas like CMYK, you've got the four colors making up your image, your photos and all of that sort of stuff. Pantone is one solid color, with a very specific you know, pigment that has been formulated and created and that is that color. There are thousands of different Pantone colors, different variations and pigments of all these different colors. Pantone is like paint solid color, you get exactly the color you want, whereas CMYK can't quite touch some of those some of those Pantone colors, some of those hues, some of the brightnesses that you can get out of brightnesses. Is that a word? It is today. The brightnesses that you can get out of some of those Pantone colors. 
Pantone also gets into metallic and pastels, and in those sort of printed ink areas, which you cannot achieve with CMYK. Pantone, PPI and DPI, pixels per inch, dots per inch, we're talking resolution here. When you are doing most print, commercial offset printing, brochures, booklets, business cards, when you're generating those printed materials, you want 300 DPI, 300 PPI as your standard, your sort of benchmark standard. It allows you to retain great imagery and nothing looking sort of that low res, low resy, low image, low res imagey, nothing looking good. So it basically just creates really clear photos, really clear imagery, and it looks great on press. Lower than that, you can start to get that yucky low res look. Um, unless that's a design element to what you're doing, in which case, just let your printer know because they'll probably say, hey, these are lower than 300. Do you wanna, you know, you know anyways. Um, so 300 DPI is your benchmark standard. If you produce print and it's 300 DPI for everything else that you do, happy days. That print will turn out just fine. Next is proof and proofing. What is a proof? When you send your file into the printer for print, they are going to give it to the pre-press team. The pre-press team will look at the file, make sure the layers are separated correctly for what you're trying to achieve. Make sure that your swatches are organized and in the correct color space. You don't want any extra Pantone colors in there if you're trying to print in CMYK and vice versa, that kind of thing. Once they've done that, they will produce proofs for you. Sometimes hard copy, sometimes just a soft PDF proof, sometimes a couple of different styles of hard copy proofs, and those are for you to look at and review to make sure nothing weird went wrong in your file, your last chance to check for typos and, and making sure everything is positioned and aligned the way that you want it. It is your last chance to look at the file before they create plates, before it gets onto press, before making changes and repair and, and fixes, it starts to become expensive. So when you get proofs, take your time look through the proofs carefully, review them with your customer. And side note here, I strongly suggest that if you are reviewing proofs of a print job, get your customer to review them with you, or at least give you the permission in writing that you can look at them and sign off on their behalf. That's last resort. I highly recommend that the person paying the bill, in most cases your customer, signs those proofs. You do not want to be liable for the cost of a reprint. Not to scare you, but just, you know, watch out for yourself. Get your customer to sign those proofs. Last but not least is a category or a definition and term and a category that can, um, that can go on for a while, but I'm gonna cut it short and I'll dive into this one deeper in another video. Last up is paper and stock. When people say, what's stock? You know, in the print biz, in the print biz, Hey, print biz, print biz. Stock is referring to the paper stock. What paper do you want this job on? Hey, yeah, I'd like to print a business card. Yeah, sure, what stock? Uh, chicken. <laughs> I like chicken. Is that good? It's not what they're talking about. Paper stock. Paper stock. Now, under the paper stock category, you have coated paper, you have uncoated paper, and you have synthetic paper. Those are sort of the three categories that cover the majority, 98.97236% of all of the papers that are available out there. Um, uncoated paper, natural feeling, got a little bit of texture to it. Think like printer paper, but like enhanced, like real nice uncoated paper. A lot of letterpress stuff is done on uncoated paper. A lot of screen printed posters are done on uncoated paper. Uncoated paper is beautiful, it smells nice, it feels nice, it holds ink really well, it's got the widest variety of colors available and textures available, that's uncoated paper. Coated paper is available in matte, gloss, sometimes satin or silk, which is kind of like in between them. It's not that matte, but it's not that gloss, it's kind of in between. Um, they print great, just like uncoated papers. You can do great spot gloss and spot matte contrast stuff really easily with coated papers. 
Coated papers are generally available in white. That's kind of it, that's generally it, white. You can get different brightnesses in white and things like that, but that is coated paper. Text weights all the way up to cover weights, just like uncoated paper, um, but you're restricted to white, you don't get the textures, you don't get the, um, the recycled fleck, you don't get the colors that are available with uncoated paper, but it holds ink really nice. Your images sit right up on the surface of that paper and look really good. Um, it prints really well, coated paper. Now, there's another category, that synthetic paper that I was talking about. Synthetic paper, I would describe as a coated paper. However, it's not made from paper fiber and a clay coating to give it the gloss, the matte, or the finish. It's generally made from plastic fibers, making it water resistant, tear resistant, sometimes solvent resistant, so durable papers. You think a, a ski resort producing uh, maps that are gonna be folded and unfolded and used for days and days and days out on the ski resort or out on the mountain bike trails getting dirty and wet. A synthetic paper, that really sings in that kind of environment because of the durability, the properties in that paper that give it the really high durability. So that's synthetic paper. Now the other thing to know about paper is that there are different weights within those text weight and cover weight categories. For example, in text weight, you can get 40 pound, 50 pound, 60 pound, 70 pound, all the way up to 100 pound text. In the cover weight category, you can go 65 pound, 70 pound, 80 pound, 90 pound, 100 pound, 120, 130 pound. So you get cover weights and text weights both at 100 pound. They are not the same. They are not the same at all. So just know that. I don't wanna go into too much detail about explaining what all that means and comparing you know, GSM and all the different weights of that. Just know that the lower the number in the text weight category, the thinner the paper. 60 pound text is really thin. Up to, uh, on the cover weights, you get up to 130 pound or 160 pound, very thick, really thick papers. Um, you, within that cover weight category, your 65 pound cover and 80 pound cover, those are lighter weight covers. Still covers and thicker than the text weight in the same number, but thinner in the cover category. So there you have it. That is six print definitions and print terms that I think you should know before you enter into that print design arena. And I strongly encourage you to, to get into that arena. There's lots of digital print options out there right now where you can go to a small local printer and just start testing things for fairly inexpensively. Just to, just to sort of see what happens, try some coated papers, try some uncoated papers, both with the same image, to just kind of see what happens. Start learning and just dabbling in that print world. So now that you got sort of the intro to some of these things, uh, some brief definitions, it's time that you learn how to export your files properly for print. And that's what this video right here is all about. So check it out. Right here.